This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. It's all your favorite movies from summer 2017. Bueller? Bueller? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. The summer movie season is finally concluded, and these studios are glad of it, because it was a disaster. Well, what happened? First, let's define things. Although this is always highly debated, we are using the traditional summer movie season to start Memorial Day weekend and end Labor Day weekend. All the stats we're going to give you are as of Labor Day weekend. This means Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is out. Because that was too early? That was too early. Okay. But so are King Arthur and Alien Covenant. What? What? (laughs) There's also the question of when a movie can be considered a success or not. Now, traditionally, that was assumed to be when the domestic gross was three times the budget. Because you got to give money to the, the theaters and producers and, you know, there's... You basically have it at three times what you spent on the overall budget. But now, foreign sales are far more valuable and more important than domestic sales. So we're going to include both in our numbers. Look at both. And we'll begin in chronological order of release with the Baywatch reboot. Mm-hmm. It had a budget of $69 million, domestic gross of $58 million, Foreign, $119 million, with a total of $177 million grossed. So, it counts as a flop. Perhaps The Rock can't carry a movie anymore? Or maybe those TV-to-movie reboots are to blame. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Budget of $230 million. Domestic was $172 million. Foreign was $619 million. For a total of $791 million, despite that huge number, because of the huge budget, comes in at meh. Yeah. <laughs> but yet it far underperformed the other four Pirates films. I think when you get to number five in a franchise, maybe it's time to put this out to pasture. You know, there are some you could argue with, but in this case, I agree. Yeah. Of course, then we have Wonder Woman, with a budget of $149 million. Domestic gross of four hundred and seven million. Foreign was four hundred million. A total of eight hundred and seven million dollar gross. It was a hit. It only took them seventy six years to get her to the screen. It's the most profitable DC movie in the modern era and the third ever. Currently at number twenty three all time domestic. And that again it was as of Labor Day weekend. We're doing about a week later. We're yeah. taping about a week later. Now she might actually save the Justice League movie along with Joss Whedon. Yeah. The Mummy. Budget one hundred twenty five million, domestic eighty million, foreign three twenty seven million, total four hundred seven million dollars. Meh. Yeah. Universal's planned dark universe franchise lands with a thud. Perhaps Tom Cruise should just sit at home on his pile of money. I think studios, and this happens more and more often, they need to understand that franchises need to occur organically. You don't just make your first film an introduction into a franchise without actually making it its own movie. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I think we can see that with some of DC stuff as well. Right. On to another sequel, Cars 3. We don't know what the budget was for it. Nope. And you know what? I think some of that comes from the fact that they reuse a lot of the stuff from the earlier movies. Domestic uh, gross was $149 million. Foreign was $176 million. Total is $325 million. Meh. With no published budget, we go with the other two films in the franchise. Domestic adjusted for inflation. Cars was $331 million. Cars 2 was $212 million. Now, I'm a huge Pixar fan. But I've never gotten the point of this one other than selling toys. However, it does sell toys, and it does sell in video, and that may be where they're looking at making right. their money. Rough Night. Budget $20 million, domestic $22 million, foreign $24 million, total of $46 million, El Flapo. Hollywood keeps chasing that bridesmaids high, and even with Scarlett Johansson and Kate McKinnon, they fail again. Transformers The Last Night. Budget two hundred and seventeen million, domestic one hundred and thirty million, foreign four hundred and seventy three million, 
total of 604 million, but still considered a flop. Despite the huge foreign numbers, the three times goal was not met. Two hours of digital explosions, no thanks. And another example of number five in a franchise. Yep. Baby Driver with a budget of 34 million, domestic 104 million, foreign 90 million, before a total of 194 million dollars. That's a hit. And you just take an original concept plus car chases plus a built in soundtrack for the win. Despicable Me 3. Budget $80 million, a domestic take of $256 million, foreign $720 million for a total of $976 million. This is a hit and a money-making machine for Steve Carell. The House. Budget of $40 million, domestic $25 million, foreign $7 million, total $33 million. Flop. Big flop. Yeah, I'm thinking Will Ferrell can no longer open a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, budget of $175 million. Domestic take, $321 million. Foreign, $418 million. Total, $739 million, which means it's a hit. And all it took was Sony letting Marvel Studios take the wheel. Mm -hmm. War for the Planet of the Apes, budget $150 million. Domestic, $143 million. Foreign, $216 million. Total, $359 million. That's actually, with even with all that movie, it's a flop because it didn't make its 3X. It's number four in the franchise and beaten by all the other modern films, plus the original if you adjust it for inflation. Yeesh. Uh, onto a war movie, Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. It was budgeted at $100 million. Domestic, it took in $175 million. Foreign, $240 million for a total of $415 million. So it's a hit. It's still in the theaters and already a huge success. Christopher Nolan shows he can do spectacle. Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets with a budget of $177 million, domestic $39 million, foreign $133 million, total $172 million, critical fail. It's the Lone Ranger of 2017. An adaptation of a French comic with two young models as the stars? It can't miss! Atomic Blonde. Uh, this was Charlize Theron as a Cold War spy, but I don't remember it at all. Yeah. Uh, it had a budget of $30 million, rather low. Domestic take of $49 million, foreign of $31 million for a total of $81 million, which gives it a meh rating. I suspect the film would have done better had it come out early in the summer or even outside of it. Yeah, it just got buried. Mm -hmm. The Emoji Movie, with a budget of $50 million. Domestic seventy eight million, foreign sixty seven million for a total of one hundred forty six million. And what's the emoji for meh? <laughs> the Dark Tower. A budget of sixty million. Domestic was forty six million. Foreign was forty three million for a total of eighty nine million. It was a flop. Another attempt at a franchise without creating a good movie on its own. And from what I heard about it, they basically took pieces from the various, various novels, novels and crammed it into a 90 minute movie yeah <laughs> like if you're doing a franchise why don't you start with the first book and just do the first book quite <laughs> frankly i think some of these books like the dark tower and stuff now would be so much better suited towards the miniseries on tv yeah yeah absolutely annabelle creation with a budget of 15 million a domestic of 83 million foreign of 138 million for a total of $222 million, that's a hit. A quick and dirty horror film coming out against a series of tentpole flops equals box office gold. Sometimes these lower budget movies can just make so much more because yep. they're so different. Um, the Hitman's Bodyguard had a budget of $30 million. Domestic was $47 million. We don't have any foreign numbers. Nope. Uh, total of $47 million so far, so it could be a meh. We'll see if this action buddy comedy has legs. So what did we learn? Well, superhero movies are still a good bet. Yes. Long-running franchises are not, nope. especially if they're number five in a series. Big stars aren't the guarantee they used to be. Nope. Foreign grosses can save a domestic flop. Mm -hmm. 
And Warner Brothers was the big winner, even after King Arthur mm -hmm. for this year, with Wonder Woman, Dunkirk, and Annabelle Creation for a total of $1.4 billion. Good job, Warner Brothers. And what did the studios learn? Rotten Tomatoes destroyed fine films. Yeah. And that's basically what they're saying now. That, oh, these reviews came out and they're, who are they to make the decisions for this? And people, if they don't see a really high Rotten Tomatoes, they don't, don't get, go see the movie. Well, you know what? They'd have higher scores on Rotten Tomatoes if they were good movies. Yeah. A, an example of this is, by the way, the Emoji Movie. It was embargoed for the reviewers until the movie came out, mm -hmm. which is always a really good sign that yes. you don't trust a movie to actually have the reviewers see it beforehand. Ha! <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I very seldom actually look at the... I um, really don't either. Rotten Tomatoes, but then we don't see as many movies as, as maybe some people right. do. Uh, because we're too busy right. on our audio podcast. <laughs> How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.